Tomorrow on the show, we will go through the best case scenario for some of the commander's key players and the worst case scenarios and see what that would mean for the team in terms of wins and losses in 2024. But today, uh, Anthony, our focus in a lot of ways is on scheme. Ah, yeah, we're getting football nerdy with it. We are looking at scheme stuff. Uh, We're going to look deeper into how the NFL is making that easier coming up at 6 o'clock with Bill Smith, the NFL's director of research and analytics. But, Anthony, I wanted to talk uh, off the heels of our conversation with Nate Tice on Friday. Where we talked with Nate for, uh, he was here with us for three segments, talking about how Jaden Daniels fits with Cliff Kingsbury and, and then some of the offensive and defensive trends of the year schematically and what he's seeing as he breaks down the whole league. And I think the, the biggest thing to remember in all of this is that offensively teams are trying to generate explosive plays and defensively they're trying to prevent explosive plays. And I think what's interesting about Cliff is they are going to try to generate their explosive plays in two ways, one of which is super traditional and one of which is, I don't want to call it less traditional. I'm going to call it less known. The first is vertical shots in the passing game. They are hunting those opportunities. The other is less fun to talk about. It's it's game plan runs, but we'll get to that in a second. So in the passing game, what I think is really fun about what Cliff does is they're going to use formations to create matchups. And a lot of times it's, let's go three wide receivers on one side, one wide receiver on the other. And this is what he did in, in um, Arizona. This is what he's done. And it's a kind of a staple of the air raid offense, even though he's not running the air raid. This is, this is just basic. If we know as an offense that if we have three receivers on one side and one on the other, that you're going to play a certain coverage. And on that one-on-one side, yeah, guys, or that one receiver side, you're going to get one-on-one coverage. Go ball. It's time. Like, let's send Terry down the field. Let's send Diami down the field. Let's send, you know, all these other dudes that run four threes or are big and strong uh, and, and, you know, kind of have a physicality to the route running like a Luke McCaffrey. I don't think they're going to isolate him a whole bunch, but really it'll probably be Noah Brown, Diami and, and Terry most often Zacchaeus some like my man, my guy versus your guy. Let's throw it up there. And with a quarterback in Jaden Daniels who throws, I would say immediately a top 10 deep ball in the NFL before he's even taken a snap best deep ball thrower in the draft in terms of accuracy and placement and and loft and like kind of understanding how to drop it in the bucket. I think that's a good plan, Anthony. How about that for some analysis? Uh, I definitely think it's a great plan. Uh, And we also got to see it, you know, on display in the preseason. We got to see it during training camp. Um, I think, you know, that's what they want to do. They want to be able to, you know, target that portion of the field. And the fact that, you know, guys like De'Ami Brown is coming around, he's, you know, making plays, hopefully that, you know, translates to the season because he's had some good preseasons and it hasn't necessarily, you know, translated to the regular season. So the fact that, you know, we're giving our guys on the outside chance to go up there, be great. I think it's, uh, I think Jaden could be, you know, poised for a big, you know, season. But I think that also is going to be dependent upon how well the running game goes because, again, the, the run game can set up the uh the pass game and i don't think brian robinson you know i I think he's one of the more underrated backs in the the league and it's in part because we've been losing like there hasn't really been a lot of excitement you know to to build around him so i feel like well last year the offensive coordinator forgot that that running the ball can happen (laughs) even though he played running back that too uh but yeah if, if b rob goes out there and do what we you know we've seen him do just not the 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 workload that you know he's deserving of. I think we can definitely be uh, excited for some big plays down the field. Yeah, I mean, B. Rob last year had one of the higher yards over expected mm-hmm. um, run. You know, stats you go to kind of the advanced stats. Like, what's it blocked for? What do you get? Um, he had forty more yards than was blocked for last year, um, which was, I believe, top ten in the NFL amongst running backs. Um, sir, I think definitely top fifteen, if not top ten. Uh, in the NFL, but it was it was good number, and he just still averaged four and a half yards a carry because he just didn't have that many carries, and the blocking at times in the run game was was not very good. Um, with that said, uh, 
you know, we can circle back to the run game in a second. I, I think his usage in the passing game could be huge. And I think that, you know, the other thing about kind of the way Cliff schemes it up, those one-on-ones, those outside, that outside stuff is there's not a great counter to it defensively that doesn't have other deficiencies. So like your running game becomes really important because the way to make it so that you can't have one-on-one on the outside is you play cover two or cover four. Well, now you don't have enough players in the box to support the run. Okay, so now we're in single high structures, uh, middle field closed structures if you want to get super nerdy with it. It just means there's a safety in the middle of the field, right? Um, So that's cover one where it's true man-to-man on the outside, one safety in the middle, or cover three, which is for vertical routes, essentially man-to-man on the outside because you're responsible for a deep third and straight line as a corner and a safety in the middle that can kind of help you, but it's not really. Mm -hmm. Um, And especially if you're playing cover three, and there's three receivers on one side and one on the other, which side do we think that middle safety is going to cheat towards? Probably the three-receiver side. And so it essentially creates a one-on-one island that simplifies the real read. It doesn't matter if it's cover one or cover three. You're not reading an in-breaking or a slant route, and it's like, is that guy playing man or is he falling off into a, into another throw potentially? Like, you just... My guy is running straight at the other guy. And if you have good receivers who can read that stuff well and read leverage and a quarterback is on the same page. And this is how Jaden Daniels lived often at LSU because he had such great receivers on the outside is okay. Well now our plan to stop it as a defense is we're just going to play really far off. Okay. Well then we're just going to run up until your cushion runs out and we're going to stop and we're going to turn around. The football is going to hit us between the numbers one and the seven right on the two. If you're Deami, whatever, whatever version of that is. And we're going to just get chunk yards by, and by the way, get chunk yards on an island where if we slip a tackle, we're up the sideline. And now that safety that was kind of shaded to the other side has got to run all the way over and make a tackle. So there, there's just, it simplifies things in a way that is great, especially for a young quarterback. And I think the last part of it, Anthony, why it's so good for this team is it happens quickly, right? You don't need a ton of protection to throw a go ball. There are some deeper developing route concepts that you, if you're running, you know, scissors concepts and you've got the, you know, hey, we're running up and then we're going to switch and one receiver is running a post and the other is running a corner. Like you're running a leak route with a tight end where he's got to, you know, one, he's not the fastest dude on the planet. Two, he's got to kind of get up through the defense and then up the other way. Like that stuff takes a lot of time. And it takes time to, to wait to see it. Not only does it take time to run, it takes time to see. You need three seconds in the pocket. It's press coverage. I got my matchup. Safety can't get over there. It may not be a 70-yard go ball, but we can we can hit a 30-yard fade real easy. And that kind of stuff is really important. Um, then you have, obviously, the solution, if you hit a couple of those, is, okay, well, now we got two safeties and, and we got someone over there to help over the top. Okay, now we've taken the defender out of the box, and that's where... Cliff in the run or Cliff's willingness to run the football and Brian Robinson and Allison Eckler's skill is a counterpunch. And so it is like the game is not that simple, but it starts with that of understanding where the numbers advantage is. And I think Cliff traditionally has been actually pretty good at this. And it's enhanced, by the way, with a quarterback run game because that makes it even harder to be right. How worrisome do you think? It is, you know, because I love the fact that it is simple for Jaden. But as we've seen with Cliff Kingsbury's offenses, you know, they usually start off good. They they function very well to start. But then down the, the stretch of the season, you know, it sort of kind of gets figured out. So how worried would you say you are with, you know, a simplified version of the offense or Jaden, you know, working early on? Say we are winning, say we are losing, like, but the, the offense is functional. How worrisome would it be on the back end, though? I'm worried. Oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> it's it's been a thing. Um, do I do I have faith that he can do it? Yes. Yeah. I'm like a five out of ten. Okay. Like I truly think it's a 50-50 proposition of whether Cliff finally is like, I know this is a thing. I don't have to worry about being a head coach. I this is an NFL. You know, I'm in the NFL. This isn't college. I got to figure it out. And he does. Um, I'm also like, what is the underlying cause of why he couldn't figure that out in the past? He's really smart. He's no, he's not a, a dummy as a human, and he's not a football dummy. 
So what is the underlying thing that he can he not do it during a season? And has that thing been addressed? And I don't know. Um, and so there, I think there is a level to that of like, what do you keep in your bag slash what counters? And also like, what are the defenses? You know, I've just described like this really hard conundrum that is pretty basic of do you have the numbers to stop the run or the numbers to the people in place to, to limit some of the vertical passing against what is a very fast commander's receiving core and a quarterback who throws the ball deep very well. Like there's only so many answers to that. And part of that is going to be the horses of the teams that you play against. Like, do they find ways to disguise coverage that work? Um, do they have the players to make those disguises work? Because yeah, if you got, you know, the ultimate example of Troy Polamalu that's showing double A gap blitz and then is a single high safety 30 yards off the ball, and he can somehow be both showing blitz and then be a middle field safety, you thought you had cover zero, and then Troy Polamalu picks you off 40 yards down the field. Like, that's not a scheme issue, that's a player issue. And so that's not what happened to Cliff, obviously. Troy had retired by the time that Cliff was in Arizona, but like just an example of the the some of this is player related, some of this is scheme related. It's happened consistently enough that there's something that's scheme related, and I'm hoping that by November, I don't have cl- or by December, I don't have clarity as to why Cliff can't make those adjustments. But I fully understand that it could be a part of the process. Um, real quickly, just to not leave this the shoe undone, if you will, we're walking around with our, our shoelace untied. Um, the game plan run stuff is something that Cliff has been pretty good at. The the most simplistic uh, description of a game plan run is like, we know you like this blitz or we know you will line up in a certain alignment based off of our personnel. And so we know that if we can get you where we want you, we can stick an extra blocker somewhere where you're not expecting. And that might open up a, a second level, you know, where a guy at the second level is normally free to make a tackle we're going to ignore someone somewhere else because we know we can get away with it based off our scouting. We're going to put that blocker on the second level, and now we're into the secondary. And you see some big, big plays where this happened a lot to the commanders, actually. They got game plan run on a ton last year. They were down in, down out against most teams. With base runs pretty consistent. And then you'd have teams just figure out, we can get four to five a game that are 20-plus yards because they're going to react a certain way to this thing. And you only get it once because then you make an adjustment. But there was enough of those things in the defense the last couple of years that the commanders got killed by it. And Cliff's been pretty good at, at getting teams on that stuff. So um, definitely something to watch for some of the big explosive plays. Um, and we'll be have the chance to break them down on take command. And, and we'll bring some of the analysis here to the radio as well. This is the Hoffman show on the team 980 and the Odyssey app.